A West Virginia House of Representatives candidate has a restraining order out for stalking women. Can you guess which party he's from? Why is it so predictable? The fact that I don't even have to say he's a Republican should be concerning to everybody here. His name is Derek Evans. Looks like he's running for a state seat, not a federal seat. Here's a quote from local law enforcement. Quote, Evans was found by Kanawha County Magistrate last year to have engaged in stalking and made repeated credible threats of bodily injury to a woman who worked at the Women's Health Center in Charleston, West Virginia. It's the state's only facility to offer services. Nine days after he was served, Evans violated the restraining order leading to an extension that does not expire until December 31st, 2020. Court documents provided by one victim's attorney show County Magistrate Joseph Shelton granted the order, saying Evans made credible threats and engaged in stalking as defined by the West Virginia State Code. Evans was ordered by the court to stay away from the victim, including her place of work. But nine days after being served, Evans showed up back at the Women's Health Center. When Charleston police officers responded to a call that Evans was violating a restraining order by being at the center, he gave them false information about the court order. End quote. For the record, I don't like referring to victims of crimes like that as victims. I prefer to call them what they are, survivors. How did somebody like this even get on the ballot? How is this legal? I don't understand. Try getting a progressive candidate with a criminal history on the ballot. Absolutely zero chance of getting them through the vetting process. It's fucking disgusting. Pastor Jesse Sumter has been making waves on Twitter recently. He posted a tweet the other day that said, quote, Brothers, a friendly reminder for the election. Make sure your wife votes exactly as you do. That wasn't his only hot tweet. A couple days later, he said, quote, Welcome to the party. I'm serious about this. The husband is responsible for how his wife votes. He should not be abusive or a jerk about this, and he should seek counsel from his wife on elections. But at the end of the day, he's responsible. Obviously, he's trying to make the point that men are the head of the household and women should be obedient to their masters. Here's another tweet from him. Quote, they should be united in voting. The husband makes sure this happens. If they vote differently, they cancel each other out. If they vote differently, the husband leaves his wife unprotected. If the husband won't vote for a guy, why would he let his wife do it? This dude is fucking bizarre. And again, as I said before, did I even need to tell you that this guy was a Republican? Was it even necessary? Why does this kind of anti-individuality mindset always come out of the Republican Party. It's like they're all about personal responsibility when it comes to a kid born into poverty with abusive parents who don't give a shit about them when they grow up to sell drugs because they have no other way to make money. It's their fault. They're on their own. But when it comes to his wife, she can't have a mind of her own. She isn't an individual. She's her husband's responsibility and he makes decisions for the house. Because what? She can't be trusted to? This kind of ass backwards mindset is disturbing to me. This dude is a total scumbag. He he needs to be called out for it. Joe Rogan had Alex Jones on his podcast again recently, and it's been pretty controversial. For one thing, Alex Jones has been banned from Spotify. And as most people know, Joe Rogan signed a contract with Spotify recently to exclusively stream full episodes to their platform. Surprisingly, Spotify doesn't seem to have any creative control over Rogan's show. So why'd Rogan decide to do it? He said he doesn't believe in deplatforming. My opinion on this is complicated. I believe in letting sunlight do its work. People say Milo Yiannopoulos is an example of deplatforming working. He disappeared from the face of the earth. But I disagree. I think Milo is an example where sunlight did the trick. He said all kinds of stupid shit until it came to the point where his own side deplatformed him. That's what you need to be successful. You need support and deplatforming tends to create enthusiasm among their base. Let them say progressively stupider stuff until they destroy themselves. At this point, it looks like Infowars, Alex Jones's quote-unquote news network, was pushed out of every corner of the internet except its own website. With nobody there to challenge his ideas, the group has become more and more radicalized. There's a trade-off with deplatforming. Forming. If you let those bad ideas circulate in society, they move the Overton window, the window of acceptable discussion, further to the right. But they can't get too far without being challenged. If you deplatform, the ideas spread unhindered, and the people still listening become more and more radical and locked into their beliefs. It's the same conundrum you find with cults. So was Joe Rogan an error to platform Alex Jones? I don't think so. As long as he's sufficiently pushed back on his batshit crazy ideas, I have no problem with it. That being said, I have no idea if he actually did. I didn't even watch it.
Our old buddy Jerry Falwell Jr., previous president of Liberty University, the religious school that his dad started, is suing Liberty U and the Lincoln Project for ruining his reputation. I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with the Lincoln Project, but it's a group of anti-Trump Republicans who basically created a super PAC to create and run anti-Trump ads. Anyways, here's a quote from PR Newswire. Quote, in his complaint filed in the Commonwealth of Virginia Circuit Court for the city of Lynchburg, Mr. Falwell claims that Liberty University needlessly injured and damaged his reputation through a series of statements published in print and spoken in large public forums and streamed online following his forced resignation from the university. According to the complaint, these statements had the effect of affirming false claims that an individual made publicly against Mr. Falwell after years-long attempts at extortion against Falwell and his wife, Becky. Based on research and investigation, this individual appears to be supported financially by political opponents of Mr. Falwell in the midst of a heated presidential campaign, likely including the anti-Trump pact called the Lincoln Project. The complaint, which includes claims of defamation and breach of contract, alleges that Liberty U officials accepted the false claims against Mr. Falwell without investigation to force his resignation and then engaged in a campaign to tarnish, minimize, and outright destroy the legacy of the Falwell family and Mr. Falwell's reputation. End quote. Falwell said, quote, I must take the necessary steps to restore my reputation and hopefully help repair the damage to the Liberty U brand in the process. End quote. No, bro, you fucked up. I'm assuming you're talking about the pool boy's testimony, but that's not even the straw that broke the camel's back. The pictures you posted were more than enough to tell us everything that we needed to know. What you did would have ended the careers of any student caught doing the same thing. And you were the president. Just admit you're a fuck up and disappear from public life like you should. Repairing a reputation that you destroyed in the first place is a pointless endeavor. We talked about Pastor Kat Kerr recently. She's an odd bird, to say the least. She's the one who talked about how she's seen God physically, in person. She saw him so vividly that she could draw a picture of his face if she wanted. She claims she goes to heaven sometimes and hangs out with angels and shit. Well, guess who she supports for president? Take a wild fucking guess right off the top of your head. That's right, she supports Donald Trump. And she says the angels do too. When she's hanging around the angels, sometimes they refer to Joe Biden as Sleepy Joe, just like Trump. But that's not where the mental illness ends. She went through this whole thing about how Jesus absolutely loves dancing, singing, and sweets. If you put a jar of honey on your cabinet, you can expect Jesus to be around. Honey attracts him. He's like a bee. He's nuts about it. Oh yeah, and apparently they have a processing facility in heaven for people who've lost limbs and pray for God to give him a new one. The heavenly secretary fills out a heavenly requisition form for a heavenly replacement limb, and a heavenly angel grabs the heavenly replacement and boxes it up in a heavenly gift box and walks through the person holding the heavenly gift box containing the limb, and boom, just like that, their limb is back. No, she's not joking. And yes, she really believes this shit. It gets stranger, so keep a lookout for it. We're going through the entire sermon. 